Hello and welcome to my YouTube channel. Today in this lesson we will learn how to set up an Anvis deployment. So we have different different uh, deployment methods in Salesforce. The most common is uh, using chain set, using Eclipse and uh, the other one is Ant migration tool. Uh, when we have a number, uh, a lesser number of components to deploy from one org to another, then in that case we use GenSet or or uh, and but in case if we have a huge number of components uh, to be migrated from one org to another org, in that case we use unbased migration. So uh, before we get started, uh, you need to have java installed on your machine uh, basically ant is uh, dependent on java so before we get started you just uh, install java on, on your machine so your jdk version should always be uh, latest and greatest it, it should be uh, greater than 1.5 so it would work if you have jdk 1.6 or 1.7 but latest one is 1.8 so you can have any one of them, but it should be greater than 1.6. So let me go ahead and uh, 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 download and distribution from this Apache website. So I will go ahead and go here. It will open up this site. Here you can select the latest zip file. So I will download this file. When I click on this, system will uh, download this zip file for me. As you can see, I have uh, downloaded this zip file. I will uh, I will copy this file in one for uh, in. Uh, I will copy this file. Let me copy this and put it here in uh, C folder. I will. Okay, so I will extract it here. So uh, once this is extracted, the next thing I need to do is I need to set two variable. One is ant home and then the second one is to add the bin folder in my path variable. So let me go ahead. Just give me one minute. I will go here. This is my PC properties, advanced system setting, environment variable, and I will create a new variable which is and home. And this should uh, this should point to the parent of bin folder. It should look like this. Okay. The next thing is I need to add my bin folder into so here I need to add bin folder uh, complete path inside this path variable. Okay. This is done. I have set up my environment variable here. So now to verify whether I have successfully installed and on my system or not, I will open command prompt and simply uh, run this command. There are chances that I may run into some error, but that I can definitely resolve. So you can see it, it says unable to locate to start chart. To resolve this error, you what you need to do is you need to you need to uh, get the to start chart file from JDK folder and place it inside lib to start chart. So as I said earlier, I was expecting this error. So uh, to resolve this error, what I need to do is I need to go to my uh, program file where I have Java installed Java. I need to go to JDK and I 
and in JDK I will have one tools.jar file. I will copy this file and place uh, it says JRE 1.8 lib. I will place this tool.jar into this lib folder of JRE. Uh, Continue. Okay. Now just close this uh, command prompt and uh, reopen this. CMD. And what was the command? You can see uh, Apache and version 1.10.1 compiled on. So we have successfully installed an, on our machine. So next thing is uh, is we need to install the force.com migration tool from uh, from Salesforce. So you can log into any developer org or any sandbox or any production org where we will find this uh, force.com migration tool. Okay. So I have logged into my Salesforce developer org. So you need to uh, go to the quick find box and type tool. You will uh, see tools under develop. You open that tool and you will see host.com. So what you need to do is you need to click on this host.com tools and toolkits. And then you can click on post.com migration tool. So it will start uh, downloading one. So here you can download the zip file. As soon as I click on this the download zip file, it will start downloading one. Okay. I, will, I need to wait for system to uh, get this get this download come get this download done. So download is complete now. Well, I, now I will go ahead and copy this file from here and put it inside. And I will extract this file. It is extracted. So in this file you will see one jar file and Salesforce. So this is the jar file which we will be using uh, inside our Apache bin folder. So uh, I will copy this jar file and put this in the lib folder of the Apache and which we have uh, downloaded from uh, Apache. Uh, website this is it so we are all set uh, the next thing that we need to do is we need to configure two files one is build.properties and the other one is build.xml let's uh, so let's get started in, uh, with these two files that will be used for deployment so before i go ahead and configure my build.xml and build.properties I will change my local directory, my current directory from J Chaudhary to, uh, where, to where, where, where I have, where I have on and uh, migration to this So let me go ahead. Cd dot dot. Cd dot dot. Cd dot dot. So I'm, my current directory is C. Uh, so now what I need to do is I need to go to on. So uh, I want to make my current directory cd t and t. So now I'm in an folder. So I can uh, run any kind of command. So the first thing is I need to configure my build dot properties. So in the build dot properties I can uh, I can. I can uh, define. I, I can define my username and password. My username would be from where I would uh, from. Th this would be my source of username. Here it goes password source 
uh, server URL, it can be login.csfos.com or uh, test.csfos.com. Here I'll be using developer edition, my de personal de developer edition, so it would be login.csfos.com. Okay, and the next thing would be build.xml.com. So build.xml would contains the command to retrieve or deploy my metadata. So uh, first thing I'll be doing is I'll I'll have one package.xml where I will mention all the metadata which I want to retrieve from the source of and I will fire so in this this is sample build.xml I got from the got along with the post.com migration tool. So I'll be using the same build.xml and in this build.xml I'll be using this command retrieve retrieve unpackaged. Correct. So let me go ahead and uh, I will remove this session ID attribute because I am al already providing my password here. So one thing that you need to keep need to uh, keep in mind is your password should be uh, your original password along with the security token because you are logging into Salesforce from some third party. So that is that is uh, mandatory for that is mandatory if you are logging from logging outside Salesforce. So your password will be loading the password um, along with the security token. If you look at this command target retrieve and package, I have provided username password. This will be referred from this build.xml, build properties, and server name would be the same and retrieve target. So whatever uh, the metadata would be retrieved would be saved. So when I run this command, it will also create one directory called retrieve and package so the data would be uh, stored in this folder and my package.xml is, is stored here if you can see if I go to uh, go to on sample and this is uh, so the sample file is the file I got from the got along with the post.com migration tool 
So the, over here on back is go and this this is my back is the decimal. Right. So I'll be editing all the Apex classes in Apex Reader. So now let me go ahead and run this command. So my command would be something like and and So I need to copy both the files from here. I need to put here. So if I open my builder XML, I was trying to run this command to retrieve data from my looks there is some issue uh, let me go ahead so there was uh, this path was not set up correctly I just did some changes but sample it should be uh, so if you go back to run it should be sample unmanaged and then uh, package.xml so the earlier it was unmanaged unpackaged and package.xml so now let me go ahead and put this command once again <coughs> So it is doing some operation in the back end. So it was completed successfully. Now let me go ahead and check what it retrieved. Retrieve unpackaged. So it has some classes and also it has one trigger. Fine. So this is how we can retrieve our, my metadata from source. So now I will go ahead and deploy this metadata from locally to some target org. So now what I want to do is I, I have my code from source org and I want to deploy that code from source org, source to target. So I modified my builder properties a little bit. So earlier it was sf.username so now I uh, change from sf to source so to identify whether this username is from source org or target org so I have, uh, I have uh, put a prefix as source and target so this username would be source source org username and this would be target in, in the builder xml as well I will I will uh, mention that instead of sf it would be source either source or target so the next thing is i would i have a i have a data from source org, org and that i want to deploy into target org so i would run this command test what it is the what it will do is uh, i have provided username password server url max deploy root so i want to deploy this pack is let me uh, deploy this object into my target dog right so here I need to Build.xml my package will be simple. Let me go and run this command and test. I run this and test because my command target name is and the name is test. So if 
if I now if I go back to my uh, target of And if I look for object, custom object, my office deploy. This is how we can retrieve or deploy using uh, and. And so, in the next video, I will try to. Uh, how we can delete some metadata from the target from using ARM-based deploy. Thank you for watching my video.